What's up guys? Tyler and Shane and we are making tears again and today we are talking about hand traps. Best hand traps of the format and we're also going to try to break it down a little bit tell you which decks um, it hits against if you're going to be side decking it to let you know where to side it in. All right so getting it started rolling it out there. Artifact Lancia. Lancia. Um, I'm going to make a controversial statement here and say main deck. Main deck with so many well, people. Speaking of real quick, our tiers, by the way, our main deck, side deck, situational, time is up, and subscribe because we didn't really have a fifth tier. So it's you main deck it, you side deck it, <laughs> it's situational, or it's time is up. And the subscribe is to remind you to subscribe to our channel. It's right there. Yep, so main deck Lancia, and I think that's a strong pick because with the um, invoked Shadal deck, invoked Dogmatica really punishes those it's good against dinosaur it's good against the bird up deck um, it just hits so many decks right now a lot of people aren't main decking it so that's why i said it's controversial but i would really think about main decking it it just it punishes the meta right now i'm gonna keep it in the side deck uh i don't think that you need to main deck it if you were playing at an lcs tournament i would main deck it if you're going to locals I would have in your side deck because of all the rogue decks. So in your point, like if I was in a competitive tournament or something or like a um, YCS, LCS, yes, I would main deck it. But I think if right now it's just a good side deck opportunity and that's kind of my take on it right now. Like that's if fair. I show up to our locals, I'm not putting it in the main deck because of all the different rogue strategies that are playing our locals. Yeah, it, it does still hit most most yeah. decks you'll probably be okay you're not going to be like oh, i wish i didn't do that but right, there's right. just more there's just sometimes better ones against those rogue strategies yeah all right next up we have ash ash i'm gonna go with main deck Argue it's it. the most generic one we've said this a million times it hits every deck there's really no deck right now that, that plays that ash can't hit something in adding a card from deck to hand is just every deck that wants to do that it's it's one of the most basic functions of Yu-Gi-Oh decks right now so um, Ash in the main deck for me. Yeah, it's also going to be in the main deck for me. Um, I, I sometimes struggle with it, but the fact is, if you're main deck in Ash, you're hitting every single deck. Like, it just, it has to be in your main deck. And I like the fact that Ash negates the effect, not the activation, mm -hmm. which is also another important factor of Ash. Yep. That actually, I know this is a low impact hand trap, but the fact that it negates the effect is actually really good. So they can't activate it again. Yeah, so is it... Is it, I have a mid-grade hand trap. Is that a thing? Because that's kind of <laughs> where I put it at. Uh, next up, we have Diddy Crow. I'm going to put Crow in the side deck. I think it okay. does have its utility. Um, you know, it is bordering on situational for me. I, I don't know that I always would put it in the side deck. But it does have a lot of functionality. A lot of people are playing it. There's a lot of things in the, in the graveyard that you do want to banish. So I like it in the side deck. Diddy Crow. Uh, I'm going to say time is up with D.D. Crow. I just, does he even, even play D.D. Crow anymore? I mean, I just don't think, I think if there's better hand traps out there that I think that, yeah, D.D. Crow can work, but in decks that don't care about banishing or what you banish, like Invoke Dogmatica, what are you going to banish? The invocation, you would want to rip, send that into the into the banished pile so that they can't keep recurring. I mean, that's a good point, but like Lancia and Droll is probably better, you know? Yeah. So like, I don't know. I think the time is up. If you have 15 cards to fit in your side deck, I just don't see Diddy Crow fitting in there. Yeah, that is, that is, that is a good point. I do like it against Eldritch as well. You know, banishing the Eldritch, um, if they leave that in the graveyard, that can do a lot. Um, but yeah, d definitely, definitely. Yeah. I would like to put it as situational, but even st what situation would you want Diddy Crow? I feel like it's you know, a little underrated. I feel like it's, yeah, it's, it could be. It could. It could be. You know, underrated. That should probably be underrated then. Yeah. All underrated. right. Uh, Dimension Shifter. Oh, D Shifter. Um, situational because a lot of decks can't play it because that effect lingers on to your turn, and if you are relying on things being in the graveyard, um, you you do not want to play D Shifter. There are some decks it's really good in. Um, the Sub Terror deck can really make really good use of it. So I like D Shifter. It's it's a really phenomenal card. Just if your deck can handle it. Yeah, it's also gonna go situational for me, mostly because if you don't open it first turn, yeah. it's kind of dead because you have cards in the graveyard. And then also it's 
for decks that want to see things banished or can play without sending things to the graveyard. So it's definitely a situational for me. Up next, which was Droll and Lockboard, Lock Lock which was heavily played up before the ban list. Yep, because Drytron, it really, really hands it to Drytron. I like it in the side deck now. It still is really good against Invoke Dogmatica. Mm -hmm. um, it hits the um, the Alistair, the Magical Meltdown, the Terraforming, the Nadir Servant, the Ecclesia. Yeah. <laughs> it hits so many so many searches in that deck. Um, if anyone is still playing Drytron, it hits that deck really hard. Really um, hard. Dragon Link, it's still, you know, they do add a lot to hand. It doesn't do the most against them, but it's still very effective. Yeah, I think that uh, Droll and Lockboard is a good si side deck card, maybe at two. I don't know if I would run it at three in the side deck, but I think that having it, it's not something that you d don't want to see against an opponent if you did side it in. So yeah. I, I think you run, you run in Droll and Lock at three? I, I do. Yeah. Okay, okay. Uh, Valor. Valor, I think time's up on Valor right now. It's just not the format for it. It kind of rotates in and out of formats. Um, right now, Imperm, I think, is a better... It looks like we left... Im oh, no, Imperm is Imperm's on the list. Right. Yep. Yep. So I like Imperm does basically the same thing, but dodges um, triple tactics talent and then has additional functionality if you set it. You can negate a, um, a spell in that column, spell or trap. Mm -hmm. So same thing, just a little bit worse. So I like Imperm better. So, I mean, you hit it. Time is up on Baylor for right now. It's not saying it won't come back, but time is up. Uh, we'll hit Imperm since you just talked about it. So Yeah, let's go to Imperm. I'm going to say main deck for Imperm this point. Main decking Imperm. Okay. Yeah. I like Imperm a lot with the rise of the in you know the invoked variants. Imperm's really good against that. Um, it, it has a lot of really generic use, which, which I like. Remember when we were playing yesterday, and I was like, people are sleeping on Imperm. I know I couldn't target, but I was just like, you put double evolution pill down, yeah, and I was like, got me. chain, uh, chain, I, um, infinite impermanence, and it would have negated his double evolution pill on his turn without even like imperm really negating anything. Like that would have been. A lot sick. of people don't watch the column, and, yeah. and I'm, I was guilty. I didn't. Yeah. I didn't take a look at the column, so yeah, it is something. It's a good card. Yeah, imperm is really good. I'm glad it's back because now imperm can work very well, especially not. It's a two way street on playing that card. Is to negate a card, but it's also for back row, like set imperm when they. Say they set a couple cards, like if you know one's punishment, they say put set imperm where punishment is, you can't activate it. Like it's so nice. Uh, next up we have Gamma. Gamma for me is a main deck card. Okay. And I love the fact that it negates and destroys a monster effect. Um, it's just it's just so generic. Um, obviously when I say main deck, it's more for like dino decks. Um, a lot of decks, you know, can't really play it in, in, in the main deck as much. But um, I really like it, um, Gamma. I think it's really strong, and it's going to be a main deck choice for me. Yeah, Gamma is definitely a main deck option. It's not only does it negate and destroys, but it's also a counteracting um, hand trap where you can, if Gamma gets asked, you can Gamma again. So it's, yep. you know, if you open multiple Gammas, you can now hand trap a hand trap. And um, Gamma's nice. It's really nice, especially when you can resolve Gamma on your turn for future extenders. Yep. Like that's Go into the Omega, nice. banish a card from their hand. That's yeah, it's nice. The fact that you can use it offensively and defensively. Yeah, so Gamma's definitely a main deck option there. Uh, Ghost Bell. Ghost not, Bell for which, me. should we say, did not get it really a lot of play at the LCS. No, it didn't because um, Drytron and Virtual World you know, were yeah. on the decline. And so this one was a, a good counter for that those two decks. And because those two decks kind of fell off, I want to put um, Ghost Bell at Time is Up. Ooh, yeah. It just doesn't. It just doesn't do enough right now to to see it play. In the, it, it's not really a card you would you would side deck. It would probably be in the main deck, um, if if anything. And you could say situational, but situational against what decks? You know, like right, right. I'm trying to think because I, I know it's now it's my time to talk. And uh, <laughs> where do I want to put Ghost Bell? I think I would put it in the side deck. I think I would put Ghost Bell in the side deck. Um, Ghost Bell, ah, ooh, that's tough. I'm going main deck. Well, what deck would you want to see Ghost Bell? So against? Ghost Bell can hit um, on Dino. It can hit Mist, right? Because it banishes. Um, um, banishes for cost, though, so I think it can't. Okay. It misses that. And invoked, it can hit Invocation. Mm -hmm. It can hit uh, Nadir Servant because it specials from the yep. graveyard. Or as from the graveyard. Um, it can hit the um, Gamma, because Gamma can also summon from the graveyard. 
So yeah. I think a lot of people sleep on Ghost Bell that it does have an effect where it negates a summon from the graveyard. So if a card lists in a text where it can summon from the graveyard or summon from the graveyard, um, then, I mean, it. I think Ghost Bell is still good. It, if you if you think about when you could play it and like different things, again, using the graveyard as an example, uh, negating Gamma with Ghost Bell. Most people don't know that you could do that or, you know, Ghost Belling invocation and those sort of things. Yeah, and I guess just just the other thing when, like, there's only so much room in the main or side deck, and I just yeah. think Ghost Bell just doesn't hit hard enough in this format. No, to, no, to I'm that. with you. I'm playing Ash over Ghost Bell for sure. I'm probably playing Imperm over Ghost Bell too. That's why I consider putting a drop in in the side deck. I mean, running three Ghost Bell against Invoke Dogmatica or Eldritch, I'm not mad at. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, um, all right, I've I snuck this one in on you. <laughs> no material. No material. I'm gonna go. Time is up. Really? There's really not a time I would be playing no material to be honest. I mean, it is it's it's cool and funny against a zoo deck to do no material, but um, other than that, I just I just don't really love the card this format. All right, I'm gonna go side deck. <laughs> I'm gonna go side deck no material. All right, we're uh, gonna have to fact check this in all Tyler's deck profiles see if he has no material in the side deck. Yeah. All right. So <laughs> so let's let's talk about this real quick, okay? Dragon Link. You summon Chamber, drop no material. You get the search, right? But now you can't link it for Striker. Mm -hmm. You better have an extender. Or Dragon Link drops Romulus, which is a link too. No material in it. Now it's locked. If you go invoke Dogmatica, you go into Alistair, drop no material. Your combo has halted. Unless you have Ecclesia in your hand. Uh, Dino, if you go into Secure Guard, or which one do you guys go into there? Uh, it goes into Link Rebo uh, and Secure Gardener. Okay, so if or I or like a Prey to Plan or something, if you're playing the Green Moon Bane. So if I drop, which I recommend. Yeah, so if I drop uh, Link Rebo and drop No Material, does that halt you? It I, could. I wouldn't drop it on Arcosaur because you can still tribute it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. It could. Um, so I think uh, in a combo heavy format, I like No Material. Uh, what's another one? Elvich, of course, it does nothing for. Um, there's maybe there's some other, you know, Rogue one. Ad Emancipator. Would crush them. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. I feel like, though, these decks will sometimes have the extender. Right. Situational. <laughs> Situational. All right. The new hand trap, Miradora. Heavenly Zephyr. This one, Zephyr. for me, um, I would say time is up, but it never even had its time. It's, so it's going to subscribe. It's going down to <laughs> subscribe because it's just not very good. It's okay. Yeah. It's like, I would never, you know, in this format, it wouldn't hit any of my, I wouldn't play it. Yeah, I just want to throw it in so we can talk about it a little bit. I think eventually it's going to see its time. I think it could be a really good card. Um, and I think that eventually it's going to see its play. So now we're going to go into Nibiru. Nibiru for me is a good main deck option. Yeah, I think it's one of the best of the format. Um, if I had to rank them, I, I would do, you know, the top three for me would be Ash, Lancia, and Nibiru. Not in that order, you know, necessarily, but... Um, with all the, the combo decks right now, um, it can really punish them. You want to have that Nibiru so that you don't wind up with, you know, going up against an unbreakable board. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I think that Nibiru is definitely a main deck option right now. And um, I don't think that you're mad against the matchups that we're seeing right now. You're, I don't think you're mad if you have Nibiru in your hand and being able to play that and drop that rock on your opponent. It definitely can do some damage. So I think that I would definitely main deck Nibiru over Lancia for sure, though, in this <laughs> um uh, Ghost Ogre. So Ghost Ogre is an interesting one because it doesn't negate the effect but destroys the monster. Yep. It's also I hard. like it in situational use. Um, it's, a, it's a good card. It's really, um, it sees its play. It has, you know, good matchups. Um, like, for example, if, if you're going up against a Shadal player, you can hit the Schism, um, pop the Continuous Trap there. So it, it, it does have good play. Sometimes you just need the destruction. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna go. Time is still up on Ghost Ogre. Um, I think in a heavy hand trap build, you can get away with it, but most builds are not gonna run Ghost Ogre. I think it could see some upping and nipping coming into the format, but uh, I think the time is up on Ghost Ogre for right now. Not to say, and that's because of all the extenders that decks offer now. And Ghost Ogre yeah. doesn't really doesn't do enough. Yeah, so I'm gonna put it in. Time is up for right now. Not to say that if we go into slower format, maybe, or where it's not so combo heavy, maybe we won't. It, you know, in a heavy hand trap deck, you would play Ghost Ogre. But. Yeah. Uh, let's hit Skullmeister. 
Skullmeister, I'm going to go with Situational. Okay. There still are decks that activate effects in the graveyard, which can be negated with Skullmeister, but it's just not seeing the play like it was last format with um, Virtual World and the Drytron deck. So for me, it's Situational. Um, yeah, I'm going to go Situational on Skullmeister. Um, it's, it's still a hand trap format, but it's not a heavy, heavy, heavy hand trap format like it was running Droll, Ash... Um, Skullmeister, Ghost Bell, all in your main deck. It's not there anymore, so it's definitely situational. Um, let me ask you this. Ghost Bell or Skullmeister? Which one are you running? I prefer Ghost Bell, actually. Okay. You know, say they, I keep going back to the invoke, but say they activate Magical Meltdown, you Ghost Bell, it, it, it doesn't resolve. Because yeah. It has to be face up on the field to resolve. Yeah, yeah. Uh, all right, so the interesting one from the LCS is the Phantasme. It's back in a combo format, so Phantasme. What do you think about it? I'm going to go situational because the only deck that I saw playing it is Dragonling. So if you're playing a Dragonling deck, I think it is a really smart option in the main deck even. Even for um, you know being able to draw a card, it's it's pretty impactful. And it's really good uh, in the mirror match. So I like, I like it situationally. Yeah, I'm going to go side deck on it now. Um, I think that considering that most decks go into Lynx and Lynx are back... Um, I can't think of a deck, maybe Zodiac, so you probably wouldn't run it. So I would put it, I'm going to put it in side deck and I'm going to run it because it does have an effect to negate and you get to draw. It has a draw occasion where you get to put back maybe your bricks that you do get to draw. Yep. Um, and if you go into a heavy link deck, you know, you just get drawing and then put it back. So I'm going to put it in at side deck and see how that well does me this weekend at locals. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So we've ranked these. This is where we're at. Let us know in the comments what you think and give us your opinions of our hand trap list here. And uh, make sure to subscribe to the channel as we get so close to a thousand subscribers, and we appreciate you all. Yeah, thanks for watching. Let us know down below, if, you know, anything that you would change, and uh, yeah, we appreciate you. All right, guys, this has been Tyler and Shane with House of Cards TCG signing, signing out. out.